Hey, bro, we solved everything this time. No, bro, we absolutely swear this is the real solution. Wait, man, this is going to fix traffic. Okay, okay, finally the real transportation solution to save our cities. Okay, maybe that didn't work, but yes, this time with AI, it will be the real market disruptor. I'm tired of this shit, and I know you are too. And you know what's the worst part? is problems like climate change, traffic, and just general transit issues in cities, we could solve almost instantly. All of these solutions already exist. So before we dive into our main topic too deeply, we need to talk about the concept of AM-FM technologies related to that intro. AM-FM was a term coined by science fiction authors to describe the realms of the clunky, mechanical, harsh real world of actual machines, and the fictional techno-fantasy spank-bank world of fucking magic. The FM world is where this is a practical form of transit, and where this wasn't just an elaborate scheme to defund California high-speed rail. The FM world is full of bullshit and talks about physics in a way where a cow can be envisioned as a frictionless sphere in a vacuum. The tech startups, grifters, austerity politicians, and salesmen absolutely love the FM world. It's a perfect place to not have to care about how things work, maintenance, and other systems that move our real world forward every day. But if I really wanted to talk about the fucking magic world all day, then my channel would be one of those circle jerk algorithm milking channels that makes fun of Elon Musk all day in the next wacky proposal that he's talking about. Instead, I want to be slightly more nuanced, so today we're going to be talking about a technology that fits in the middle of the Venn diagram, straddling the lines between FM and AM. Speaking of, let's give some examples using that Venn diagram. On the left, we have the FM, things that either don't work because they physically cannot operate yet, are completely outclassed by another technology, and or things that are so impractical because they are the real life version of jingling keys in front of a baby, the baby being usually venture capitalists. Over here, we have unrealistic things like the Hyperloop, Tesla Loop, personal spaceships, and the Chicago Bears winning the Super Bowl. On the AM side, we have things that are proven, like high-speed rail, heavy rail metros, and trolley buses. But the most interesting area to look is the center, where for various reasons, technologies are either hampered by being too immature, too logistically challenging, maybe requiring very rare earth materials, and or being very politically problematic. Here we can find things like maglevs, self-driving cars, electric aircraft, nuclear cargo ships, and lastly, battery-powered city buses. These are technologies that all technically exist, but for various reasons, they all have issues that vastly hamper their deployment out into the real world of actual machines. In this video, I want to talk about the last on that list, battery buses. But before you click off, let's talk about why this stuff is so important. Okay, first I have to start with Alaska. That's right, something you're not expecting, just gotta keep you on your toes. But this is all about buses, actually. Alaska has a population of 740,000, which is roughly the same as the current weekday ridership of SEPTA, Philadelphia's largest transit agency. Think about that. SEPTA moves the entire population of Alaska once every single day. That's a pretty impressive feat. And not only that, it's the seventh largest transit agency in the country, so there are six agencies that move more people every single day. The New York MTA moves 2.4 million people every day, but oh, that's not even counting the subway ridership. That's only the bus ridership. Because most of my audience is American, I can guarantee that you may have never ridden a city bus, let alone ridden transit. So I'm telling you these numbers to put in perspective the idea that these agencies are incredibly important and affect numerous people daily. So how does this lead into talking about battery buses? Well, one of the largest problems with battery buses at the moment is that their charging infrastructure is incredibly expensive, and it does not scale well. And since these agencies are so important to moving so many people, it's good not to handicap them with buses that are poorly optimized for certain routes. Washington DC has accidentally killed their circulator bus by mandating all electric bus services, but then failing to fund the expensive charging infrastructure. 
The circulator ended up costing more and more because of the capital costs of installing the new charging infrastructure far exceeded their operating budget and leading to the service ending in 2024. Does this mean that we shouldn't be electrifying and instead be sticking with diesels and hybrids for now? No, but we should be electrifying with better and more nuanced technologies. And there's one technology that I think encapsulates the idea that we should be investing not in a one-size-fits-all FM solution, but into actual machines that are proven, like trolley buses. Trolley buses are just electric buses, just like battery electric buses, but the main difference is that they get majority, if not all, of their power from two overhead DC-powered lines. This works similar to a tram, streetcar, or electric train, but the main difference is that they need two poles instead of one because rubber tires on buses are non-conductive, unlike steel wheels on trains which can use the rails as part of the circuit. You can immediately recognize that a city has trolley buses if you see two parallel lines of catenary next to each other, and there are no rails in the street. The historic benefits of building a trolley bus network over a normal tram or streetcar is the flexibility to go around obstacles, the ability to climb steep hills, and not having to alter the roadbed, because at the end of the day, it's just a fancy bus. And in a world of actual machines where road maintenance and badly parked cars exist, these are massive benefits. So why am I praising trolley buses but not battery buses? Well, let's talk about some of the major downsides of battery buses compared to trolley buses that no one seems to be discussing. Of course we know the obvious things like limited range, especially on hilly terrain, and the issues with sourcing quantities of rare earth materials for building huge batteries for electric vehicles. But the one thing I find confusing is that no one ever talks about how insane the power demands are for specifically battery buses compared to trolley buses, or even hybrids. In a typical transit agency, buses have their highest frequencies and ridership at rush hour, and usually around nighttime, the majority of the fleet heads back to their yards for refueling, refitting, and cleaning. With diesels and hybrid buses, this is pretty straightforward. Just quickly refuel the buses as needed before sending them out before the next day. The only real limitation being the quantity of fuel that can be stored at the depot physically. But battery buses are different. They require to be plugged in once they return to the depot so that they can be completely charged in time to take them out in the morning for their runs. And this is a big problem, because unlike diesel, which is just a storage issue, this is a power issue. Let's check the spec sheet on New Flyer's battery bus lineup. They offer a few different battery range options, but for the sake of comparison to the San Francisco trolley bus network, let's pick the max range battery so that the battery buses can actually handle San Francisco hills. So let's assume one of the worst case scenarios. You have about 30 buses coming to a singular depot at the end of the day, and they all need a full charge. According to the new flyer spec sheet, these buses can be charged back to full at the depot in 3.8 hours, which is just enough time to get ready for the morning runs. The issue is not the time nor the range of the buses, but the power draw at the depot that these buses cause when they need to all be recharged at the same time. So let's take that 520 kilowatt hours and divide it by 3.8 hours of charge time, and we get 136.8 kilowatts of input. Okay, that's a huge power demand, but now let's times that by 30. That is 4 megawatts of energy at peak power draw. Remember, this is a singular depot, and that's assuming there's no losses in energy conversion too. This is roughly the equivalent of 190 Tesla Model 3s charging all at once. So if a singular depot wants to charge its buses overnight, it's going to need the equivalent of the Sunset Reservoir Solar Array to charge its buses, or I guess charge a battery bank to then power the buses. That array is four times the size of the depot itself, which is comical, not to mention the amount of substations you'd need for the DC fast charging. But instead, what if we were to spread out these power demands over a longer period of time? And what if we didn't have to lug those heavy batteries around with the buses for the entire run? Well, that's exactly why modern trolley buses are so damn cool. They can essentially sip power from overhead lines during their runs, only using the energy they need when accelerating or operating. 
and modern trolley buses usually have a small battery on board to run a few miles off wire, either for everyday route operations or for deviations. The San Francisco Muni 30 bus is a great example of this. It makes an off-wire run down Old Mason Street to the sports basement store totaling about two miles of off-wire running in that direction. And the best part is that once the trolley buses are reconnected to the wires, not only are they getting power for movement, but they're also charging the batteries as they operate. There is no downtime to have to sit somewhere and charge the batteries. Trolley buses can actively charge while in operation continuously. I bet that you wish your stupid Tesla did that too. Anyway, it's so strange to me that we have this incredible technology of an actual machine, and it's not some strange salesman's pitch of magic, but it actually exists right now. Trolley buses are a great example of an older technology that increasingly becomes more and more relevant as we stride for an all-electric future. Especially an all-electric future where we are conscious of mining rare earth materials and carefully constructing sustainable transit for our cities. The elephant in the room, of course, is the investment into the overhead wires that make this all possible. But anyone with a brain can see that this is an investment into real infrastructure that is proven to work, not into unproven technologies, kind of like pure battery buses. The local International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers that work on Muni in San Francisco have a great plan to expand their amazing network and to take advantage of electrifying more of the bus routes throughout the city. It's bold work, research, and advocacy like theirs that will truly push our transit systems forward. I highly advise you to check out their full plan that I've linked below, especially if you want to advocate for Muni to expand their system instead of humoring new battery buses only. Luckily, I got to work with them on this video and got to talk with some of their leaders about the future of the Muni system. If you are interested, I'll make a follow-up video to this going into depth about some of the specific changes that they want to eventually make. Also, I have to thank Jeremy Zorek for providing a large amount of the footage in this video too. Anyway, it's a shame to me that trolley buses are such a niche and often overlooked piece of infrastructure. I truly believe that they're a key piece in building a truly sustainable future for our cities. Thank you for watching and thank you always to my Patreons for supporting me. Let's build an actual future with real sustainable machines, not one of fucking magic.